So Chris, you you are the founder of Zeus Bikes. Can yes. you uh, explain the audience what what a Zeus bike is? Well, Zeus is our company. Uh, we make electric two wheelers, mm -hmm. and we've been uh, developing and refining a product which we are going to be selling soon. And it's this um, electric bike that you see, and basically what we've created is something akin to. Uh, I get a lot of uh, fun made of, of me for this from my friends, but I have this tattoo on my leg that says, a sandwich must be greater than the sum of its parts. And that's basically what we've built here is an electric <laughs> bike that is like one of the best sandwiches you've ever had in your life. It's, um, the brakes are good, the power is good, it's light, it's strong, it's nimble, it's comfortable, and it looks good. And that was basically the more detailed part of our brief is like, e-bikes are coming, we know they're coming, Mm -hmm. And not yet have we seen a bike that's like, ooh, I want that one. So we mm -hmm. took it upon ourselves to build something that um, would contribute to the next one of the new ch one of the coming chapters of two wheels. You know what I mean? This chapter is going to exist. So we may as well uh, start writing the pages if we have the opportunity to grab the pen. Mm hmm. So um, you said you were uh, about to sell the bikes. Where can the people get the bike? Zoosbikes.com. So we've already sold our first 50. Oh, yeah. And we actually have, yeah, it's been an insane ride, especially during this time. It's, um, it's been quite a roller coaster. But we've sold the first 50. And the truth is we actually have 103 on the way. Uh, a couple of those we're going to hold on to, but... Um, you know, we figure it's best to just continue getting them out into people's hands. Mm -hmm. So the first 50 had a super low price. Ultimately, we're going to be selling these at $2,500. Okay. It's because we use premium components. The cells in the battery are super high quality. Samsung 35E, mm -hmm. Tektro brakes, Chromali frame, all good materials. Like this thing is built to last. So it's, you know, you get what you pay for. It's going to be 2,500, but for the first 50 bikes, we sold them for 1799. Mm -hmm. So like n nearly uh, whatever it is, like 30% off or more. Now they're 1899, but that includes free shipping. And we're only shipping to the lower 48 for now. We're scaling up by the end of this year and we'll be shipping elsewhere. So there will be more opportunities to get a bike at a discount later on in the, uh, later on in the year. But for right now, we just have a handful left. Well, I think we'll sell probably about 40 more um, at this current price of 18.99. Zoosbikes.com to answer your question, that's where you can get it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, that's good if you explain a little bit more, that helps. So in the whole electric scenes, uh, like skateboards, electric bikes, there's a lot of sheeting going on regarding advertising about voltage and what. Can you give like a high level explanation? Um, what, uh, what yeah, it's funny. I've toyed with the idea of doing like a little bit of a video, kind of like a professor's lesson with a whiteboard <laughs> or something. Um, there are basically three terms that you'll hear uh, that are thrown around, and that's voltage, amperage, and watts. Mm -hmm. And a watt is a general power weight rating, but it's very, very general, and you might even say it's arbitrary. And that's because to get watts, you must multiply volts times mm -hmm. amps. And those two numbers are always fluctuating. When a battery is fully charged, you'll have the most voltage. You can think of it like a balloon. You've blown it up and it's full of air pressure. And when you use all that pressure in the form of power, actually funny thing, voltage is an electromagnetic measurement of pressure. So you discharge all of that voltage, the voltage is coming down. So your first multiplier is changing. And then amperage is how fast you're moving electricity to a motor. Yeah. So if you're going up a hill, or you're accelerating, or you have a heavy load, you're going to be using a lot more amps. Versus if you're at cruising speed and you're holding down the throttle, not so much, it's like mm -hmm. a trickle. So that is always changing because you're speeding up, slowing down, going up hills, going down hills, lighter, heavier, et cetera. So those two numbers are always changing. You're multiplying those two numbers to get watts, so your watt is ultimately drastically changing. So for example, on our bike, we have a rated wattage of, it's actually uh, 720. 
and 750 is the legal limit, but we have a 48 volt rated system mm -hmm. multiplied by a rated amperage. And a rated amperage means you can run that rating of amps mm -hmm. through that controller 24 seven until the end of time. And in theory, it will not melt. Um, so we have a rated amperage of 15 amps. So you multiply those two together, you get 720. That's under the legal limit of 750, almost at the door, but really doesn't make any difference. However, our controller, like any controller, uh, mm -hmm. can handle what's called a peak amperage, which means you can handle uh, a higher amount of amps for a, a, a defined amount of time. Mm -hmm. Usually it's 60 seconds. So this our controller will um, will peak at 25 amps. So mm -hmm. if you multiply 48 times um, 25, that number is about 1400. But when you have a full battery, a 48 volt system is actually at about 52.2 volts. Mm -hmm. So then again, that multiplier is higher. And so you get a higher wattage. So for example, if you were to have a full battery, get on a bike and start riding it uphill, you'd be dumping amps like crazy. Okay. And that's, that's long winded, but I think that's a thorough response as to how you yeah. All right. get okay. those things. Yeah, thanks for the excuse. It uh, looks like you know what you're talking about. I'm a little bit lost, but <laughs> that sounds like I've it. learned everything from the internet. From the internet, Google told you that. So I got some questions popping in in the chat. So for the audience, it would be nice if you can pull them in the question poll so we can go through them afterwards and it's not going lost in the chat. But I have a question from We Explore 2. He's asking regarding um, the legal limit. Um, so are these specifications required uh, for specific states or is it for US nation? Is it in Europe different? How does it work? So there's always a new criteria or a new set of laws almost anywhere you go. And mm -hmm. ever since, um, it's pretty standardized in Europe, but it's always seems to be changing everywhere. Okay. Right now, these bikes are legal class two bikes for the US, the bikes that we are selling right now, the model we're selling. And we're going to be selling other models in the future that adhere to other localities, legal regulations. These bikes are a class two fully legal bicycle in the US, generally speaking. Now there is a blanket rule calling class two the same legality as a bicycle. Where you can go with a bicycle, you can go with this. Mm -hmm. um, New York City has a, um, I believe it's the only place that requires a class one, which is basically the same as a class two, except you can't have a throttle, however, it was announced just a few months ago that New York City was going to change that to allow class two in the city, mm. which is another f interesting point. You live in New York City, you have an electric bike, you've ridden several el electric things and you're out and about all the time. What is the state of electric bikes in New York? So Chris, uh, are you still there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're back. Sorry. So like in New York City, where class one is only legal, how many e-bikes do you actually see on the street in New York oh, City? Oh, yeah. Um, all, as many as cars. Yeah, it's as many as cars. All the delivery people using um, e-bikes, uh, like the all skateboards, um, getting more and more electric bikes. Yeah. 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 So the de facto legality or like the de facto norm of what it's like to ride an electric bike on the street, you can get away with a lot more than what we are currently offering. Yeah. However, our offering is completely legal for the United okay. States. Um, um, in Europe, yeah. we're going to be offering Europe, the UK, Australia, even Canada have tighter restrictions on power and speed and Later on in the year, we're going to be offering essentially a Euro spec, which uh, will have that limited offering, which we'll be able to ship to all of these places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. So we already discussed regarding how voltage and what works together. So mm -hmm. no bullshit. How, how far can you get uh, with a Zoom bike? So in the electric space, especially with electric bikes, you will always see an asterisk. They'll mm -hmm. give you a range and it'll be like 40 miles to 75 miles. You're like, really? And then there's an asterisk. 
Yeah. <laughs> I say fuck the asterisk. Yeah. I really hate that because it depends on how you ride, how heavy you are, how much you're using the throttle. And our bike is a throttle forward experience. We want you to use the throttle. And if you only use the throttle, great. The pedals are there for convenience and you'll end up using them from time to time. Like in this video, you see they're cruising and every little bit, they'll give a little pump just to kind of speed up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You can get up to 27 miles per hour doing that. Um, the throttle will take you actually a little bit more than 20, just a little bit, but le yeah. legally it'll take you to 20. And so if you're doing that on flat land, if you're 200 pounds, I'm almost 200 pounds, mm -hmm. I've tested numerous times, flat land, 200 pounds, full throttle, which means you're just dumping amps. Like it's, they're just flying out the window. Um, we get a minimum of 25 miles. 25 miles, wow. Minimum wow. 25. Um, yes. If you're in San Francisco and you're only using the throttle, that could go down. But I will honestly tell you that the floor, the minimum, yeah. is 25 miles. And to wow. put that into context for you, that's like going from Battery Park to 125th Street, back to Battery Park, yeah. back to 125th Street, and then have like one to three miles left over. Yeah, wow, the 25 miles, this is a lot. So yeah. the Zeus bike, there are a lot of electric bike, other electric bikes on the market. So what makes um, the Zeus bikes different to all the competitors? So like a bullet point list, it's lighter, it has better geometry, it has premium components. We didn't cut a corner anywhere. You're gonna get what you pay for, in other words. Um, so, and in, in a more, in a more uh, figurative sense, it, the reason why is because, um, the reason why it's better is like I said at the beginning of this interview, is that it, the sandwich is greater than the sum of its parts. It's just a really well-balanced, really well-crafted bike. And like, for example, everything starts at the frame for me as a motorcycle mm -hmm. builder. Everything starts with your skeleton, your frame. And this is a 100% uh, chromoly steel frame, which just gives you great road feel. It's going to be lighter. It's going to be stronger. This is an aircraft grade steel. Um, and it will last forever, honestly. Like you could ride the hell out of this thing. At $17.99, you're getting essentially 10 cents per mile minimum. And then you could re replace the battery and get three cents per mile at the total cost of ownership of the bike. So you could presumably ride this every day for three years, then replace the battery ride it for another three years, six mm -hmm. years from now, there's something else that captures your attention or you don't have time to ride anymore because you have a family or I don't know, any situation. And it sits in your garage for 50 years. In 50 years, you will be able to rebuild this bike because it's 99% the DNA of a regular bicycle. You could make it a regular bike. Like we could actually make one of these bikes with just regular pedals, et cetera, no motor, no battery. Mm -hmm. And it will be a beautiful piece of kit, really. It's um, it's just a good bike. Yeah, I know I'm biased, I know I built it, but this was specifically the brief in building an electric bicycle, like it's just gotta be right. Yeah, can you, I see that on the picture here right now, can you actually ride two up of the bike? Yes, absolutely. We, um, you know, there's like a recommended riding um, weight limit Mm -hmm. And officially, we'll probably call that like 299, right? Mm -hmm. 300, you're pushing it is what we're trying to say there. But we've had up to 450 plus pounds on this thing on flat land, but cruising around full throttle, circle, circles. I have some photos, but to get to 450 pounds mm -hmm. on a bicycle, it was quite a spectacle. Mm -hmm. You were there for it. Yeah. yeah. This was at Floyd Bennett. Do you remember that when Dom yeah. was yeah. on it? So... <laughs> Yeah, you can ride two up. Absolutely. Um, we, we have to put in all those cautions and stuff because of legality and protecting ourselves. Um, if you put two up on it, just like if you put more weight on any two wheeler, it changes the riding dynamics and you have to know what you're doing. Otherwise, it, you could hurt yourself. So yeah. uh, we'll very scrupulously put all of those cautions in place but for anybody realistically asking if you can ride two up absolutely nice. 
cool. I'm pulling up the question poll. So uh, if anybody who's joining this and has some questions to first, please leave the questions in the question poll. So somebody is asking motorcycle builder. Oh, tell me more, please. So can you give us a little bit of background um, about you, Chris? Um, so it's funny. I was recently on a podcast where they asked me about this, and it's a generally motorcycle builders podcast. And uh, I said that I don't consider myself to be a builder, or at least mm -hmm. in that arena. Um, if you are a builder, it implies that you do it uh, professionally, like it's your income, or kind of puts you on a certain stratification of craftsmen. Mm -hmm. And sure, I'm a craftsman, but um, I consider myself a designer fabricator. Uh, what I like to call myself is just a guy in a shed. Mm -hmm. And I've been building things my whole life. I've built 10 custom motorcycles and they've been a handful of them have been featured in notable online blogs or in uh, custom motorcycle shows that are pretty well, uh, you know, regarded worldwide. So mm -hmm. I guess I've um, been featured on that level before. But it was really just my own projects, my own curiosities, my own kind of um, rabbit holes, as they were. And mm -hmm. this has been like one of the biggest rabbit holes of my life. And I've poured maybe at this point two and a half years or more. Shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since July, right. July of 2017 is when I stumbled into that rabbit hole. So coming mm -hmm. up in July will be three years of intense focus and experimentation. And we built a bunch of different bikes, uh, all of them part of the R&D process, experimentation. And we've arrived at this, you know, we've tried many different motors and batteries from different suppliers, different materials. We built an aluminum bike um, and just really kind of wanted to feel it for ourselves because if the brief is gonna be, that's just gotta have great feel then mm -hmm we got to know it feels good okay very great so there are a few more questions uh, in the question poll so for example s 1000 r post wants to know if you can actually um, ride it in the rain and where the bike has been built so our our parts are sourced from china and taiwan and we mm -hmm. have scrupulously selected what parts and what suppliers we're using mm -hmm. um <clears throat> For this first round and for the foreseeable future, we are assembling ourselves in our, I guess our headquarters, you can call it, in Fort Worth, Texas. So we've ordered all the parts from each different part from a different supplier um, mm -hmm. to our own specifications, ships in on a boat, we assemble it and then ship it out of. So we're doing final QAQC and then shipping it out to our customers locally here in the United States. And it's not only that you just uh, did some research online when i remember that correctly you actually flew to uh yeah in thailand and to check everything out to make sure that you're getting the right, right. parts and the quality right absolutely so we've met with our suppliers and mm -hmm. vetted them and had multiple multiple i mean at this point how many motors have i ordered from china it's probably 25 or more mm -hmm. batteries 50 or more and various components. We've also flown and met our suppliers. So yeah, we've gone through the whole thing. Like I said, we're coming up on three years and a few months um, of working on this and getting it right, making sure that it's right. Because as we were learning this whole process, we saw a lot of, sure, you can call them com competitors, but I think mm -hmm. contemporary is more of a appropriate term here. And so we've seen our contemporaries stumble over some bits and those have provided learnings for us as well. So yeah um delivering something not on time or not right especially at the beginning is something that you can't happen so we uh when we say this it is a good bike like we really mean it yeah uh last question from the question poll is uh, um is there a maintenance interval that you have to do because of the disc brakes and how much does it cost uh, uh, the replacement for the battery so we haven't put an official price on the replacement battery yet, but I can tell you that it has to be $600 or more. Um, so it depends on how much of a margin we'll be taking. Um, customer service is important, especially for an early brand. And it's why we're offering such steep discounts just to mm -hmm. 
make it easiest to get our product into your hands. You know, mm -hmm. that's the only way that we'll be able to grow. So I would say um, we'll probably be offering replacement batteries early on for as little as $600. And that's the most expensive part of the bike. Like that's where all of the cost goes and we're giving you quality cells. You know, you could spend $400 on a battery, but only get 150 cycles out of it. Our batteries are made to do a minimum of 800 cycles before you have to replace it. Mm -hmm. So if you're riding every day, that's two and a half years every day. Um, like I said, if you calculate the cost um, over the lifetime of a battery, it's three cents per mile. You yeah. literally couldn't, get cheaper transportation anywhere in the world for that. Nice. So um, yes, you'll be able to get batteries. Um, there are wearable items like tires and brakes, just like anything else. Uh, mm. These are standard brakes. You can find replacement parts anywhere on the internet. We mm -hmm. will also carry them on our store. Brake pads for a set, it's like 40 to 50 bucks. And you'll need, it depends on how much you ride is how often you'll have to do that. Same with tires. We'll offer you the offering a few different kinds of tires eventually um, on our website, but it's a standard size. You can find tires anywhere. So you're free to do that. It's part of the beauty of this being 95 or even 99% the DNA of a bike. Yeah. It's basically a bike plus a battery. We just crafted it all to fit so that it's a great balance. But otherwise, yeah, you can absolutely uh find replacement parts whether it's from us or from anybody else mm -hmm. you also asked if it's waterproof our mm -hmm. controller and all of our connectors are waterproof uh you you always want to be careful with that you know like i would mm -hmm. we've ridden our bikes through torrential downpour like a monsoon mm -hmm. and and during testing like you know trying to find the most extreme environment and um test it there and it I was expecting to get ele ele electrocuted, but I didn't, you know? <laughs> so I say, yeah, it's waterproof, but don't ride it through a lake. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Okay, cool. Chris, I don't have more questions. So let, let's wrap this up. Can you, yep. uh, one more time, where are the people able to order the bike? Where are they getting more information about the Zeus bike? All of the information in long and for short format is on our website. And if you click through all of our posts on Instagram, you you'll even find more information there. You can also DM me on Instagram. I answer 99.9% .9 because there's always someone interesting out there. 99.9% um, .9 of the messages that we get, I uh, will even have a full conversation with because we're constantly learning and you know we only have a handful of people that have ordered these bikes. So it's almost like a relationship anyway, you know, right. little, little family. I can, I can it, share the, the in bike. our thank you email, we say welcome to the zoo's family. So yes, absolutely. Like <laughs> nice. a family. I was very lucky that I was able to ride on the, on one of the bikes and I tested yeah. a few electric bikes and I have to say it's an awesome, great bike. And thank you. Uh, Chris, I wish you all the best that uh, more people are ordering the bikes and that you grow yeah. bigger. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank we you have some much. interesting a final note this week, this coming week, we have a lot of interesting um, publicity generally from some of our other projects. We're also doing a giveaway right now. Oh. Uh, we haven't announced the rules yet. We will after the next couple of days, because the next couple of days we have some interesting press coming out. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to launch a giveaway campaign and it'll be a competition. In oh, fact, nice. I expect you to enter yeah. because uh, we're going to keep it very open-ended. It's going to be like um, anything goes. So like draw something or send us a t-shirt design or write us a letter. Literally wow. anything. You have to submit something, but <laughs> anything allows you uh, to enter into the drawing and it's a random selection. Nice. So you're, and you're I think, a giveaway of the full bike and you're going to announce it where, what the people have to do? We'll announce it on our Instagram page in probably about seven days or so. All right. Next weekend. Okay. I will likely. be there. I will be there. <laughs> yeah. Chris. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. We might even give away two bikes, but you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, don't give too much away. <laughs> you have to make well, some money uh, too. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing the maximum of what we can always. Right. So. <laughs> awesome. Chris, thank you very much for joining. And like yeah, you said, man.
please go on his Instagram and follow these guys. They're doing Thanks all everybody for watching. And yeah, all the best for you, Chris. Take safe. Awesome. Take care, man. Bye. Ciao, brother.